this is a revision of a video audio that I've already made on YouTube SoundCloud what I must teach my teenage daughter by a friend of a dear Christian I'm going to take what I've done personally to inform my daughter I'm going to make it public as to addressing the fathers on this video it's not going to be one-on-one -on -one as the previous video was between my daughter and me it's going to be a father to the fathers about our daughters and this is something that we need to teach I need to teach you fathers because you look at the moral decay of the world today we need to take a stand as fathers to our daughters for the Lord Jesus Christ now my notes are written to my daughter and I ask you to forgive me if I become personal and you know stutter around and make it us and I keep saying I or her but the moral decay of the churches more important for us fathers to take a stand and lead our daughters the way of the Bible because we can't trust our churches even if it's a godly Bible believing church because you can't give 45 minutes to a Sunday school teacher and then turn our doors to, to the world six days of the week Sunday school teacher can't do nothing in 45 minutes what the world can do in six days we can't entrust our pastors to take control of our children when he's got multiple families including his own so what God has placed in my heart is for my daughter and what God has placed in my heart is secondary is us fathers to our daughters making these again for all to hear for all to use based upon the Bible the King James 16 Bible and what us fathers need to do to raise our children we need to raise them for God the Father God the Son and the Holy Spirit the inspiration of the Bible now our daughters will only see God the Father through us their fathers and we cannot be hypocrites we can't teach our children go do and we don't do ourselves we can't be expecting them to do right when we are not living right. As a man, 47 years, saved in 1987 at the age of 18, I lived a sin-bound, disgusting, full life before I was saved. And how many of you fathers out there would want your children, your daughter, to grow up the same way you did? Now, if you lived right and you were saved early, then God bless you. But I wasn't the case. I wasn't brought up in a Bible in a home. I was brought to the Catholic Church on Saturday nights. Slept most of the time I could. Took part in sacraments, and that was it. That's all the God I had. If I had a Bible, I never read it. I've never seen a gospel track, never had a witness, never had anything to April 1987 when I received Christ as my Savior. So as a father stepping out to raise my children, my child for God, this is all new for me. And I'm bound to make many mistakes. Because I didn't have the example. And now I've got to be the example. I've got to step off, put off the world in the flesh, and put on Christ. Because I'm not living for myself, I'm living for my family. And you got to take time, you got to sacrifice something in order to stand up for our daughters. You got to give something up, Dad. And it'd be well worth it. Now, the introduction 
what, what we must teach our daughters, part one. The foundation of this study. Because if, if we do not impart to them, our daughters, somebody else will. And that somebody, the odds of that will be enemies of God in the Bible. Christians are a minority in the world. A true worshiper of Jesus Christ, a true Christian, is the minorityist of the minorities. A, Genesis 1.27, I'm going to just quote the scriptures, you pause, write them down. You can get a copy of this. I'll take the watermark off. You email me. I'll send you a, a Word document, PDF, whatever you want. Copy it, print it, change it. But use it. Use it. Don't abuse it. Genesis 127. Our doors were created by God the Father and not evolved. The world and the schools will teach evolution. And if we send our child by chance to an evolution teaching, we've got to take that evolution and detox them to the creation of God. Psalms 139 14 says, We are wonderful, wonderfully and fearfully made. That's not under the evolution account. So the very source of our daughters to be godly is they got to be made by God. Or they'll be scientific. And Paul says about science, falsely so false. Genesis 2-7. God furnished her life. Mankind is living because of God. We need to be the foundation that God made man from dirt dirt will go back we have an eternal soul that animals do not have and God breathed spirit into man and man became a living soul that needs to be imparted to our daughters Genesis 2, 22 and 23, in 2016, you got to say this. Backed up by the Lord Jesus Christ. The sexes of mankind is either male or female. Transgender, I don't know, is a sin, abomination of God. You can't raise your daughter to think she's a male. You can't raise your daughter to think, I don't know what I am. You need to deal with that. You need to get that right. You need to see a pastor and you need to see a doctor. Because if that child's thinking that, and you need to pull that child out of school because they're only going to incriminate her even more to even bless her even more about her sinful thoughts. Male and female. That's what God said. He's the creator, remember? Or did you just come from monkeys? You know, in the realm of evolution, women never evolved. It's, you see the picture of the ape, and it comes to a man. You never see a woman. Think about that. Genesis 2.24, Romans 1.26 and 27. <clears throat> we must teach our daughters, if they're going to seek a boyfriend or a husband, he has to be a male. Same-sex marriage is an abomination. It's called sodomy. And it violates the word of God. Romans 1 says it's to their own confusion. So we've got to teach our daughters God made her. God has distinguished between two sexes. And God has told us who to seek for a partner. Telling her that God has made her. Telling her she came from life from God. That God has made her. 
We must teach Romans 3.23. All have sinned, excluding the Lord Jesus Christ. We must impart to our children sin. Stealing is a sin. Lying. All lies are a sin. And you can't back up to that child by saying there's a Santa Claus and Easter Bunny and Tooth Fairy and whatever and, and Kitty Cat went to heaven. You can't teach against lies when you're lying to your child yourself. But you need to teach that child what sin is and they are doing it. And they're going to do it even after salvation. Salvation does not start that wicked heart. That heart will stop with its imagination and with its sin. The, the, the thoughts that we get, the actions we do, that will stop upon when we're dead or raptured. All have sinned come short of the glory of God. Romans 6.23, we must teach our child as much as God has made her, God's given her life, sin will kill her. She will die. And she will die because of sin. Sin causes death. Whether you're hit by a bus or cancer or uh, you choke on food. Okay, those are symptoms of death, but the cause of death is sin. Romans, that's like my shirt. The wages of sin is death. She sins, she's going to get a check. That check, death. Revelation 20, 11 through 15, there will be a judgment, great white throne judgment. We need to teach our daughters if, if they are not trusting the gospel, if they have not believed the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior, they will be appear before God, the great white throne judgment, and God will cast them into the lake of fire. We must teach our daughters that if they're going to sin and they're not going to put their trust in Jesus Christ. They're going to reject the gospel that Christ died for our sins. According to the scriptures, he was buried and arose again the third day according to the scriptures. If she does not believe in that, God will send her to hell. We got to teach them that. Acts 16.31 See, we can't get saved if we don't believe God created us. can't get saved we're all messed up on who we are and what we are Acts 16 31 she needs to be saved and that only Jesus saves not religion not being a good girl there are none good no not one not because she sells the most cookies I ain't gonna do it not because she's the brightest and smallest and prettiest girl I ain't gonna do it she's a valiant Victorian that ain't gonna get you to heaven She's a homecoming queen. That ain't going to get you to heaven. Only Jesus saves is what we must impart to our daughters. John 3, 3, Jesus said, ye must be born again. We must teach our daughters there's nowhere else bound in scriptures. Salvation is wrought in being born again. She was born of her mother. She's born into sin. She needs to be born again and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. Now John 3.16, God provided his love while yet she was a sinner. While I was a sinner. She needs to know Calvary. She needs to know about Calvary. She needs to know why Calvary. She needs to know everything that Jesus Christ has done for her. And she can do absolutely nothing but trust and obey and believe. That God's sacrificial love was spent for her. That's a great foundation for raising our daughters. A foundation set that, hey, not only did I set out to, to raise my daughter in the Lord, but guess what? My daughter got saved. Glory to God. The angels in heaven are rejoicing. All those before heaven are rejoicing at, at one. Who has repented and believed in the Lord Jesus Christ. Maybe she's already saved. 
Bring her back to Bethel. Bring her back to where she say, remind her who she was. Remind her what she was. And remind her and remember what she has become. The Lord's Supper is to remind us of the finished work that Jesus Christ has set forth with us. When she takes that bread, she's to remind that that body was broken. Isaiah 53, the beard was pulled, the nail prints, the blood, the pain, the agony, that bread. Reminder. And when she takes that juice, the blood, the holy blood of God, Acts 20:28. 20, was upon the cat of nine tails, was upon the thorns, were upon the fist, was upon the ground of Jerusalem, was upon the nails, on the cross, was shed the Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. Reminder. John 3.36, life is Jesus Christ. Wrath is rejecting Jesus Christ. And what, what is wrath? It's hell in the lake of fire. 2 Timothy 3.16, realize that all Christians are not going to have a prosperity, wonderful life. If they choose to set out to live godly in Christ Jesus, the Bible says they shall suffer persecution. They will not have all the friends in the church house, even a Bible-believing church. They will not be the most liked in school. They will not be the favorite at the workplace, and the family may reject them. But Jesus Christ has it. Jesus Christ sets their love on it. When they choose to do right and fight and do correctly and right. I keep saying right. Do right, right. They are pleasing to God and hateful of the world. We must encourage our daughters to do right. I hope you get the word right. Pleasing God. And we must teach our daughters the life of Paul. The life of the disciples, all of them except John, were killed. And in Ephesians 6 2, we need to tell her, respect her parents. If she can't respect us, she ain't going to respect the pastor. She can't respect the pastor, she can't respect the cop. She can't respect the cop. She can't respect her boss. And she can't respect her boss. She can't respect her husband. She can't respect her husband. She cannot respect God. Part two. Nakedness. we got to talk about this. Look around. Look at the world. Leviticus 18. We must teach our daughters about nakedness. The world will impart to her that it's okay to be half dressed or even no dress, no clothing. Go down to the beach. Look at the beach. Listen, fathers. This is called a bra, not a bikini. It's a colorful bra that is being wore out in the public. You think God appreciates that? You think those little little tights on, on the on the loin? That's called panties. Colorful panties. You are sending your daughter out in her underwear with another name attached to it. Bikini is a world word for bra and panties. And it gets men looking. Matthew 5, 28. world says it's okay. What do you think the world's going to say tomorrow if the Lord tarries? There's already five states in the union that women can walk around by the law allowing them to walk around topless. One of them's New York. You going to go that way? And Christians will show their flesh and the fashion not standard found in the Bible. Another thing we need to teach our, to our daughters, other Christians may not be the proper example by the Bible. We need to teach our daughters all Christians that profess to be Christians are not living right. 
We need to show our daughters that that is proper living. That is improper living. That is someone you follow. That is someone you walk away from. Judge not, and he should be judged. Then you let your child go into the world and lose rewards at the judgment seat of Christ. You got to judge between the right and you got to judge between the wrong. Jesus said there's cold, there's hot, there's lukewarm. Cold gets you nothing. Hot gets you rewards. Lukewarm gets God sick. We need to teach our daughters that there are some Christians out there, and listen, they're, they're worldly. They're lukewarm. They're cold. They are not ambassadors of Christ. And there are Christians over there, man, they are dear. They love the Lord. They do right. They're sinners, but they try. And our daughters need to seek after them. You ought to be, as a father, be a right Christian, doing right, for your daughter to look and say, hey, I want to be like him. And Satan will attempt to entertain her and have her entertain the flesh, even of her own. Satan, Luke chapter 8, that man was possessed with the devils, just wanted to take all the clothes off. See, before Genesis 3, the, the man looked at the woman, the woman looked at the man, they weren't ashamed of their nakedness. Now that they fall into Satan and, and the serpent in Genesis 3, God gave them clothes, and now we're just trying to take them off. God wants us to wear clothes. I, you, must teach our daughters that public nakedness is not permitted, it's sin. Look what the world teaches. I was a little boy once. I didn't get I didn't get much hands on Playboy. Fredericks of Hollywood turned my little butt on, and they weren't naked. I find that little Fredericks of Hollywood catalog hidden in the hidden in the house. Yeah, told you I was a bad little boy. And the Lord spanked Leviticus 18:1. The Lord spanked it. Oh, it's the law. Yeah, but it's a good law to follow. It does not overdo what Jesus said and it goes right along with what Paul said this is a good law the Lord spanking the most you want to do what God says you want to obey God you want to raise your child right you want to be a proper father and husband you got to do what God says this chapter is about sexual immorality it's talking about nakedness what's wrong what's right Speak unto the children of Israel. Speak unto your children. And say unto them, I am the Lord your God. You taught your daughters about the Lord God? Have you explained to them who God is? That would be a very good foundation. You know, God was when I grew up an unsaved Catholic. He's up there in the cross, nailed to the cross. That's what my God was. He was a piece of bread and a little shot of juice. I mean shot. That's what God was to me. After the doings of the land of Egypt, the type of the world, Egypt is a world. Don't do that. Wherein ye dwell, shall ye not do. Don't do what the world does. And after the doings of the land of Canaan, that's where they're living. Where did I bring you? Shall he not? Do? Listen, God has brought you in the land. God has brought you into the world. He said, but don't be the world. Be outside of them. Live of the world, not in the world and by the world. Neither shall you walk in their ordinances. You shall do my judgment and keep my ordinances to walk therein. I am the Lord your God. Father, is God your Lord, your God? Now, if you're not saved and you, you want to raise your daughter right, and say, hey, you know, I just want to raise my... Great, good. But come to know God, Jesus Christ, as your Savior better. 
Ye shall therefore keep my statutes, my judgments, which a man do. He shall live in them. That's the law. That's Old Testament works. I am the Lord. None of you shall approach to any that is near kin to him, family, to uncover their nakedness. I am the Lord. God says, I am the Lord. Don't you uncover anybody's family. The nakedness of thy father, the nakedness of thy mother, shall thou not uncover. Uncover. It is thy father. Thou shalt not uncover her nakedness. The nakedness of thy father's wife, thou shalt not uncover. It is thy father's nakedness. Well, you know, I go to a good church, and we don't need to really worry about this. We go to church. This was going on in the Corinth church. This sin. There was a man that was sleeping with his father's wife, and the church was condoning it and allowing it. Paul had to address it's sin. It's wrong. Turn that guy over to Satan so he can repent and get right, which he did. Thank God. But just because you're in a church and things are going to be right, just because you're in a church doesn't mean that your church is going against, going with the Bible. It may not. They may allow things that's against the Bible. They may do things the Bible says not to do. You got to stand up as the man of your house and say, this is what the Bible says. This is what we're going to do. The church is against it. Well, the church is against it. My family is not. The nakedness of thy sister, the daughter of thy father, or the daughter of thy mother, when she is born at home or abroad, even the nakedness thou shalt not. Uh, she's my half-sister. No excuses. No loopholes. She's your sister. Stop making any kind of excuses. I mean, there's jokes about, listen, that'll be the next thing that's going to be allowed to be married. Brothers and sisters. That'll be the next law that will probably be passed. Kin can get married legally. Or even brother and brother or sister and sister. That'll probably be one of ones too. But even if it passes law, even Washington, D.C. said you can marry your brother, you can marry your sister. God said no. It's wrong. It's a sin. And we can go on. I, I suggest you to read the rest of this chapter. But we stand out. We are not to imitate the world. John 17, 16. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. We're just here to live. We're here to be ambassadors. We're here to go tell all the world about Jesus Christ. That's why we're here. We are here to raise Christians up from nursing to age. That's why we're here. We're not here to, to, to entertain, to have good time and all that. We're here for a purpose to tell people about Jesus Christ and to raise them up for Jesus Christ. That's our purpose. And that includes our daughters. Your free time will be when, when you become a widow and your children move out and you are on your own. There's your free time. But you're still told to go all in the world and preach the gospel. Kin, blood relations, family. To make them naked. Now again, accidentally, accidents happen. All right, make the doors just a little bit open. Make like our, we, in our house, we got a dog that opens up doors. You be in the bathroom, the door, and she leaves the door wide, practically wide open. All right, that's, can't teach her to close the door. So those kind of things happen. But what Leviticus 18 is saying, I want to see you naked, dear. I must teach by Leviticus 18, 1, it's that God spank. I must teach my daughter that when God or a parent or a pastor or someone speaks with biblical authority, they need to obey, they need to hearken, they need to listen, and so do you, Father. We are not to set out to purposely make someone naked. And we're talking about our daughters now teenage. We're not talking about marriage. We're talking about your teenage daughter. My teenage daughter. There will be no reason for them to want someone to get naked or someone to make her naked. At all. It's a sin. 
But take it from me, it happens. And there's serious consequences. Serious. You know, when this rule is violated, the person that's been violated will never forget. They can forgive, but they can't forget. When you refuse to do to your daughter what God has spoken you to do, you will bring lasting memories on them for fall. And that relies on you, Dad. I know personally. Thoughts can be very irritating when it comes to sin. Take my word for it. Now, we come to realistically, mothers have to undress a child to change them, to bathe them. And daughters do help. But do you realize we're in such a society today that there are men that will take a baby and undress it for sexual pleasure? It's sick. That's absolutely sick. And that's not what we're talking about. Titus chapter 2 says that the aged women are supposed to teach young women. So when you got, well, my daughter's in nursery. She's not supposed to change diaper. No, she's supposed to change them. She's supposed to learn from them aged women and from your wife. If you got baby children in the house, infants, your daughter is to learn by them, aged women, Titus chapter 2, how to take care of children. They may one day have to take care of children. But they're taking off the diaper for bathing, for cleaning, not for sexual purposes. If they are, it's, per it's perverted. It's wrong. It's a sin. But to change a messy diaper, you have to do that. I mean, man, isn't man just bad enough with sin and everything like that? He's born and he poops in his own little diaper. He can't even figure out where to go to the bathroom. The great I am. All these great doctors and all that. Yeah, they were in diapers one day. And they may end up in diapers one day. I am not, you are not to disrobe in front of your daughter. Nor are our daughters to disrobe in front of us. Flat out, no excuses, no, absolutely none. There are to be no videos or photos of her nakedness. If you got a photo of your little baby girl on a bare skin run with her butt showing, you need to burn it. That's nakedness. That's a sin. And if you got one of your do of your son, or of you, that cute little baby picture of you in the tub is wrong. Get rid of it. Someone else might see it if it's yours. There was a dad that was arrested for play acting. He pretended to be his daughter's boyfriend. So she would send her boyfriend, which was the father, naked pictures of herself. Biblically and mor morally, that's a sin. And it's wrong. And thank God it's a crime. I can't even think about wanting to see my daughter naked in any way, shape, or form. I try to avoid it. I don't shouldn't say I try, I do avoid it. And it's not right. There are just some people out there just so sick they sick. Now there is allowance for our daughters. mother they're both females and any body distresses of my teenage daughter your teenage daughter can be discussed female to female 
your daughter's nakedness or questions, concerns, worries, whatever she has about her nakedness goes to the mother and not to the father. I have no idea. Uh, unless you're a gynecologist, I don't think you have any idea how the woman's body works either. Okay? Don't we get enough problems trying to figure out what our own body does? When they got issues that needs to be seen, they go to mother and not father. You say, father says, well, I don't have a wife. I don't have a girlfriend. I don't. Titus chapter 2 says, <coughs> seek the aged women of the church to aid the young lady. That may take some humbling. But you need to find, if you don't have a spouse, you don't have a girlfriend or a fiancé. You're a widow, or whatever. You need to find somebody in church that you can trust, honor, who loves the Lord Jesus Christ, and to bring your problem. If not, we'll get into a doctor. And we come to doctor. You don't have no spouse, no woman. Doctor. But about the doctor. A medically licensed practitioner for the purposes of examination now as I said there are some Christians out there who don't act like Christians there are some out there who say they're Christians that are not Christians that goes true for a doctor he may not even be a doctor he may be a sexual pervert doctor you never heard of Doctors having their ways with the patients. You never heard of a patient being violated sexually by a doctor? One has been trusted. So we must teach our daughters that no time they are to be naked alone with the doctor. When in that examination room, and they have to disrobe. It's not just her and the doctor alone. It must be the mother or a nurse present at all times. Eyewitnesses. Mother should really, unless, you know, circumstances. I understand. I was a widow at one time. Find somebody in church, say, I'll give you the money. Could you find some time to take my daughter to? And it must be for examination or treatment only. I mean, if you walk into a dentist's office, he tells you to disrobe. But patients who sat in a dentist chair have been sexually molested. When they've been gassed. There are many accounts of doctors who abuse their patients. Don't allow your daughter to be abused. A mother must explain to her daughter what an OB. GYN physical is. Man, we don't have no idea of that stuff. You know how they got to put it in initials so we, you know? The only thing we know is STP and WD 40. We don't know anything about OB, GYN, whatever. But it's, it's the female body. Again, we don't know nothing about. Like they don't know what anything about our body. The daughter is to be, how is the exam, I don't know you know how to say this because I don't understand this, okay? But how is the procedures completed? What happens, what is supposed to happen at the OBGY? That needs to be explained to, to the daughter. When you are to see the doctor, the doctor's office, 
the hospital room. This is the places where the examination takes place. This is the procedures that happen. This is what he's going to do. This is what is going to happen. Who does it? A medically licensed practitioner. Look on the wall for his degrees. Make sure it's not signed by Donald Duck. Make sure the name matches his name. Make sure in the corners where it doesn't say www.medicalids.com or something. Make sure you didn't pay five bucks for the, for the diploma. Listen, they're out there. They're phonies. When it should be done. Certain times of life, certain needs to be. And then we need her to learn when the boundaries have been crossed. When it is actually sexual assault and not an examination. And she needs to realize that it's not her fault, but the person that done the deed, that she should not be afraid to come and say, I think something more happened than what it should have been. Even in question, she should be able to freely come to her mother and say, I think he did something to me more than he was supposed to. Again, that's a mother-daughter talk because we don't know nothing. God put women to be our helpmeets because we're dumb and stupid. The only, only thing that God gave man before he made woman is named animals. How well do we do with that? Bluefish, goldfish, we really did good on that. So we need to introduce our daughters to God. We need to introduce our daughters to Jesus Christ. We need to introduce them to life and death. We need to bring into their lives the sin of nakedness. And the penalties thereof. Where the lines are. We can't just assume they're going to learn it on their own. Because they're not going to. Fathers, it needs to be taught. You need to teach it. I've been in several churches. I'll finish now. I've been in several churches. For whatever reasons, I've been in several churches. Only one church had one woman applied Titus chapter 2 and took a bunch of girls under her wings to teach them about the facts of life. One woman and one church of many churches I've been in. And we'll get into Titus chapter 2 later. The church ain't going to do it. Fathers, you have to. Rise up. I'm going to be a witness for Jesus Christ. I'm going to be a soldier for Jesus Christ. I'm going to tell people about Jesus Christ. Tell your daughter. Nehemiah, chapter 3. There was one guy who had his daughters working with him. Work with your daughters. And you know what? You do it prayerfully. You do it rightfully. You do it by the Bible. You do it God and Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. You're going to reap rewards that are beyond 